My name is Eddie Stenson. I've been in Winona for uh, six years, and I love the buses. I love the bus, and I love everybody. But we got a community, we need the buses free. We need it 24 hours. My name is Margaret Trott and I work, I've lived in Winona since 1981. I, uh, for the last seven years, have worked for Winona Area Public Schools. I teach adult literacy classes in the mornings and two nights a week. Encounters I've had with the bus service are with my students because uh, a number of my students don't drive and so I try to coordinate a bus schedule for them uh, that uh, allows them to get to my classes, which start at six, but then um, there's no way for them to get home. Our bus service, the way it is, is only for people that really have no alternative. And even then, it, even when you have no alternative, it's really hard to juggle a job and uh, do your errands and, and use our bus system. At um, Bethany House, they have an evening meal, and sometimes people don't come for the meal because it's dark and much colder in the evening, and they don't have a way to get from Bethany House, which is on the west end, back downtown to the, to the um, shelter. I'm a part of the Catholic Worker community here at the Bethany House on West Broadway, and we've been here for um, close to 30 years providing hospitality in Winona to folks of all sorts of different backgrounds. We're open currently Monday through Friday from 4 until 8 p.m., and we serve a hot meal at 6 every day. We've been serving our dinner meal at 6 p.m. since the early 2000s, and that has always conflicted with the bus schedule. And of course, many of the folks that use our services here are really dependent on public transportation in order to get across town. The bus schedule has been a, I would say, a long-standing issue in our community. And I do understand that the finances behind the busing system are always complicated. At the same time, it's a service that's so greatly needed in our community and particularly in the evening hours when it's dark. Many people are going out in the evenings uh, downtown and, and trying to get home from work and other errands. And having the buses available past 6 p.m. would be a massive help for a lot of people, not only that we know, but that we know of in this community, certainly. We all know that huge companies are operating 24-7 in this community, and yet there's such limited access to getting to these workplaces, which are often on the edges of our community. If people go to work at night and can't find a way, and they say, okay, oh, I'm, find, I'm finna call the company cat or Lyft or Uber, you spending more, you losing more. But if we have Winona bus, Winona Transit, oh, that will make a difference in our community. We're a really productive uh, community, but it's difficult for people to get back and forth to work. And without a bus system that runs in the evening, we really make it uh, impossible to get by without a car. Many of the uh, factories are remote on the edges of town and far from the residential areas. So people really, I think it would um, reduce absenteeism. I think it would make uh, it more impossible possible for those uh, positions to be filled and to be filled consistently. That would improve productivity. It would be a good thing. I think often buses are correlated to people in need or the poor and that's unfair and it's also not helpful and I think many people would love to have access to that without the stigma of that idea. I would hope that more people using the same services makes more community happen. So 
one of the recent growths in the system was to incorporate the free busing with the second Saturdays at the Art Museum. And I thought that was a beautiful way to bridge communities because there's all kinds of people that use that second Saturday as a time to do art with their children. And there's people coming from all different places to do that. And to incorporate using the bus together to get there felt like a really good option for people to, to bridge those gaps a little bit. So in our case, we wanted to make sure that we identified and met as many potential barriers um, for folks coming to access our amazing collection here at the Minnesota Marine Art Museum. And so in 2017, we wrote a grant to the Minnesota State Arts Board and we said, uh, we asked and we found out that transportation is the single most important barrier for our underserved audiences of color, marginalized audiences, and unheard populations. So this was something that we wanted to address with uh, a specific program that was funded through our Minnesota State Arts Board Arts Access. We were able to offer free transportation to and from the museum on our second Saturday programs. And so this works pretty simply. You call, reserve the uh, Winona Area Transit style ride. They will come and pick you up and bring you directly to the museum. And then you can give them a departure time as well. So folks can get here easily and enjoy all the great stuff we do. We are open on Sundays, but because dial ride doesn't um, run on Sundays, that service is only offered Tuesday through Saturdays because we are a leisure time activity, open nine to five, uh, Tuesday through Sunday. And so when people have access and free time on Sundays, they're not able to get here uh, using dial ride. That's why I don't like, I don't like when the buses don't, when it stops. Like for example, I wanna go, like say I wanna go to play bowling or to my family. I can't do it, I can't, I, it won't. So our goal is free fares for all, and then our, our longer goal is then hopefully free fares for all will build use of the bus, and then we'll be able to have more frequent buses and buses in the evenings and buses on the weekends. I'm always optimistic that a series of changes, especially small changes, has kind of a ripple effect. And I think both changing the bus fare or making it free or accessible to all in addition to some scheduling and routing changes would definitely benefit more people and would certainly, along with some kind of a campaign to make people aware of those changes, would, would make it a more appealing service to use. We want our buses to be maintained and we want the bus drivers to be well compensated for the important work that they're doing. And if we can obtain that funding through other sources besides charging the ridership, that will certainly increase our ability to be more creative about how we use this transportation system. And I think it will encourage the companies and organizations that would have to step up in order to fund that to increase ridership within their own ranks and that really is its own benefit that if say for instance Fastenal or Winona State decided that they were going to help fund this transportation project then of course it would be to their benefit that they promote riding the public transportation within their students and employees so I think it's really a win-win all around. In addition to being a bus advocate, I am a huge bicycle advocate and uh, there are so many complaints about parking and plowing and alternate side parking and towing in this town. And certainly there are ways around it and <laughs> not having a car is one way. So yes, leaving that, um, that issue aside by having better access to other modes of transportation would certainly improve things. People that got cars, people got cars right now, that would save them gas. That would save them gas money. For example, if I had a car, I would love to ride the bus. I could save my gas. I don't have to spend my money. I could just park it in the parking and hop on a hop on. Like I got a bike. I'm hopping on the bus. <laughs> so overall would improve, make Winona a greener and more livable community and it would be specifically beneficial to employers and to hotels 
and to our tourism industry in general. And there's a lot of redundancy, right? We are moving students, Winona State is moving students across town multiple times a day in those big purple buses. Well, why not make a system that's available free to all the students, but all the community members as well? Certainly there's limitations within our bus system, but the fact that we have public busing in a town of less than 30,000 is also very impressive. And the fact that it continues to be a priority and something that the community is talking about wanting to not only uphold but make better is a real point of hope, I think. And certainly in light of the fact that we're facing climate crisis, we should all be thinking of creative alternates to having our own personal cars. And we should all be coming together as community to recognize what good things we already have started that we could make even better. And our busing system certainly fits that bill. I want to be part of uh, a campaign to encourage people to take the bus whenever they can. Even if they can only take the bus one way and have to arrange for a ride home, I think that uh, the possibility of building ridership and then building the availabilities and the convenience of the buses and building ridership some more, I think a lot of people would get behind that. And so I think that's something that I really want to be a part of is getting people to use the bus even when it's not a necessity because it's a good thing to do and it's a fun thing to do and it's a convenient thing to do and the more that we do it, the more fun and the more convenient and the better the community is.